Indeed we have. Look at this. This is so exciting. As you can see, there are some stripes in amongst the lions there. So as we thought, one of the zebras unfortunately met its end. So for those of you that are a little bit squeamish, this is maybe not where you would want to watch and maybe just close your eyes. But the Inkahuma pride managed to kill a zebra and then Birmingham is here and everybody is feasting. And I think they've killed this zebra probably in the early hours of this morning because the cubs' tummies are not very big. They're all the adult females have massive stomachs but the Birmingham male and the Cubs tummy are not very full at all now there is going to be a little bit of interest here because he who must not be named has come in and my, may actually chase all of these lions at this stage so let's hope that that passes quickly but the cubs are having a full-on feast and you can see how much of the zebra has been eaten. We know the last time we saw the Nkumas that they were thin and they needed a meal. And now look at those stomachs in the background. The females are massive. So they've definitely gotten really good nutrients out of this. And now we know why the zebras were so sort of worried about what was going on and making us a big fuss and calling. This has got to be from that particular herd of zebra. And it just shows you how far they've chased to be able to actually get them. So really quite amazing. So a comment from James R.A. Hendry, all the way from the Masai Mara, that's very impressive that the Inkuhuma pride made a kill. Well, James Henry, indeed, it is very impressive, and I'm certainly very glad that you are back in the Masai Mara. It's good to see your face out that side again, and I hope you are having a wonderful time, and that you enjoyed your trip to Italy, because I'm sure James must have loved the culture and the food and everything that goes along with being in Italy. So I'm very glad that James is back, though, and I'm sure he's going to have an epic time in the Masai Mara now with Brent and Jamie, and it's pretty much the last of our crew have all arrived there, and so the team up there is now complete which is fantastic but this is so cool I'm so excited and, and not because the zebra is dead but more because the Inkuhuma pride just needed that meal and the fact that they're finding food here on Juma means that hopefully they're going to spend more time in this area hopefully we're going to get an issue or well, a sign that they're going to hang around start hunting and I can see Amber eyes in the back there you see she's here so if she is the mother then she's just gotten really good nutrients you can see her eyes very clearly there we go. That's definitely our girl Amber Eyes. Those dark, deep amber colored eyes are very diagnostic. You can't miss her. And so she's had a good meal, which is great. And so far, I can only see three lionesses. Um, I think there are four here, but I, th I can only see the three. And I saw the female with the blind eye, and she was also here. And then the other two, I don't know who they are. There's one that's lying off in the distance quite far away, and then there's another one that's just lying off to the right of that bush. There you can see the stomach just protruding out. And so that's what I think we're going to see a lot of over the next little bit, is these guys just digesting. And it's amazing how much meat they can put away. When you look at the size of this particular zebra, and you think about how much meat was on there, the fact that that's all that's left over the period of a few hours really is quite something particularly when you think that the cubs themselves don't have full bellies and neither does this male. Now the male, I haven't really had a good look, but I think it's Tinio. I can't see really nicely at this stage. All I've got is his backside facing me. And to be honest, I'm so excited just to be with them that I've forgot to really look and pay attention to who he actually is. So, Michael, you're wondering at what age do this, does the male no longer tolerate the cubs feeding at the carcass right next to him side by side? Well, Michael, I think it's once they get a little bit older and bigger and they start resembling more an adult individual. So once they start looking as though they are big enough to sort of fend for themselves, and that's normally, I would say, about a year and a half to two years, he's going to start getting more and more aggressive with these cubs. You can already hear every now and then there's a bit of growling from him as the cubs get a little too close. So he's going to start getting into that situation where he's going to push them away and start sort of moving them off. Um, once the males, or if there's a male within the pride, those get chased off first. He'll be more tolerant of the females, particularly as they get older. And once they reach two and a half, three years, then they're definitely not. But that's definitely Tinio. His lip is caught up on his face. 
and it's definitely definitely him so nice to see him here as well because the other night when we saw him he also looked like he could do with a meal so that's really good news and i wouldn't be surprised by the end of today or tonight that there's more than a, one birmingham here and we end up with a situation where another one is coming and you can see there's a little bit of sort of bonding that's going to happen and this is often what happens after a meal is bonding does take place they'll kind of go and groom one another and, and rest up next to each other and so it is very very cool to see i'm so happy for the pride this is excellent news and for us like i said juma it's great news that the that they're figuring out that there is food here and that they will be able to hunt here the interesting part and this is sort of what fascinates me about wildlife is that we make changes in their environment and yet they're able to utilize it and, and use it straight away. This road that we're on is a newly built road. It's a road that was only built last week and I keep, I've driven it a few times and said that I'm sure it's going to be a productive one. And the Inkohuma Pride, I have never seen their tracks coming as far south as this um, in the last few months, in the, in the last six months. They haven't been in this area at all. And all of a sudden this new road has been cut and they followed this new road through and it's gone right through a section where we've seen zebra a few times and so that means that they've worked out that there is food items already in this area and they didn't just come down the sort of road and then just stumble upon a zebra they were in and out of this area checking the whole time and so they are utilizing a change in their environment just like we would if we saw something new we've used this road to sort of drive and check and so have they and it really is quite interesting how quickly they become accustomed to new areas and how they use open sections to be able to move it's very very interesting the nice thing is that we track these guys all the way along and thankfully we had help from tax and Aubrey and they checked the southern and, and western boundaries so we knew that those lines had to be somewhere here and it really made it much easier for us to find them now our lions are enjoying a zebra and they would love probably to hunt what James has got all the way in the Masai Mara, but I don't think they would even know what it is.